Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video! Are you aware of the hidden benefits of the Fallout First membership? I'm about to show you 11 things that Bethesda didn't tell you at all. Check them out! Hey everyone! Last week Bethesda has released the new paid membership Fallout First and as expected, most of the community didn't receive it well. Now, I have already made two videos about this topic. The first one with the very essentials of this new system, and the second one with my honest opinion about the entire matter. I want to make a third video now with all the hidden features about the Fallout First that Bethesda didn't tell us for some reason. Now, I want to make some disclaimers here before we jump into the points, because this is really not a promotional video. I don't want to convince you to buy or be against the membership. This is not an opinion video either. My goal is to inform you about something that is a critical part of the game right now. And number one, Bethesda didn't tell us. And secondly, I don't see anyone discussing this at all. So I feel like I should be the one informing you about these things. And as a Fallout 76 player, you should know about them. Whether or not you're thinking about getting the membership or have it already. So now that we have that out of the way, let's begin and start with the last point. Private worlds are not just perfect to farm as a solo player. If you have a small team or a clan, then going into a private server is the perfect place to farm whatever you want. First, because there is no one to disturb you, there are no griefers, and locations will all be full with enemies to farm. Also, you have a team, so doing things like Scorch Art or Encrypted can go by really quickly, therefore you can be efficient doing these events and getting the most value out of it. Moreover, you don't have to worry about exploiters or griefers or even flamers. You are there with your own team and that's it. You can also avoid people wearing the power armor Strangler Heart, which can lag everyone else or even force them to crush. So you can protect yourself as well and now we see all of these teams and small clans in their own worlds which means that in public you will hardly see scorch earth encrypted and events that can be started by players and require a huge number of them to finish and complete the events this also means that the market will quickly shift especially in terms of prices because now people can farm more and easier Therefore, there will be more resources, more legendary items of value, therefore the price will tend to drop and the market has to adjust to the new reality. Something else I have noticed, and it cannot be a coincidence, is that whenever I'm playing in a private server, especially when I'm alone, I get way more waves of enemies at my camp than I used to in public servers. And I'm not talking about a group of low-level gulpers or anglers, which is typical in the mire where my base is. I'm getting high-end waves of Scorch, like two Scorch Beasts at once, sometimes even legendary Scorch Beasts, and lots of Scorch Minions. Now, this is a lot of free experience and resources right at your pace. I know this can be bothersome if you are in a hurry to do something, but most of the time it can turn out an opportunity, especially if there are legendary bosses in the wave, because you come to your base and you end up farming legendaries, experience, caps, resources, and so on. This never happened in public servers. I can't remember a wave like this one, for example, in a public server, but in private worlds, this is actually not uncommon. So, I do think this is a benefit and probably a decent one. Now, one of the main features advertised by Bethesda for the Fallout First membership is the new scrap box with limited storage for scrap items. 
that is all cool and everything very convenient for people with the membership but there is a hidden feature that they didn't tell us at all which is you can free a lot of space and recover real storage place by simply storing all your junk into the scrap box I have stored almost all my weapons that I had in my inventory, which I use every now and then. And now I am properly storing my gear because I could free my inventory or my storage from all the junk items that I had for ages that are there for repairs, for crafting or even for selling later when I have more space in the player vending machines. As such, it is a reality that you can get more inventory space in your storage with this new feature. Bethesda didn't tell us things in that way, but it is how it is. This is how it works, and you should know about it. Workshops. Hmm. So, workshops used to be something quite useless in public servers. I mean, you would basically get them for the weekly challenges and that's it. Why? Because first, people could contest it and trigger PvP, and most people in Fallout 76 hate PvP. And secondly, if you disconnect or crash or something happens, you would lose all your workshops because you can't really get back to the server you were in unless you had a friend there already. So for these two reasons, people didn't really care about workshops, but now with private worlds, things are changing. Why? Because you can simply claim all the workshops you want without anyone contesting them ever. I mean, even if a friend join, I doubt they will contest it from you. And secondly, if something happens to your game, if you disconnect, if you have a bug, you need to restart, that's totally fine because you can end up in the same server even if you are soloing. You have a window cap of around 5 minutes to come back and end up in the same server. Hmm, that's ideal for farming. You can get lots of workshops and farm the hell out of them. Get all the resources, sell them, use them for yourself. And that's one more reason why market prices will slowly change over time. This is probably my favorite benefit of Fallout First membership and the private worlds. And Bethesda has never mentioned anything alike as well. It is the fact that you can go to any location and it will always be filled with enemies and resources. I mean, in public service, I usually had this issue, especially with popular places like White Spring and West Tech, where enemies were just dead. In cooldown, sometimes people would just come here, kill part of the place and leave the rest, which is, yeah, not so good. And now you can freely farm whatever you want at any time. And that's amazing. I think that's a really great benefit even when I just want to find something, let's say I need rubber, I go to Grafton's high school and many times it would be just depleted. I had to server jump to find it or I need some food. I go to Watauga, there's lots of instant food there and also was on cooldown. I would have to server jump here and there and now I don't. In my private worlds, the things are always there and that saves me a lot of time because I can just remain in one single world and do basically everything I want and need without having to server jump. This is by far one of the most overpowered features that Bethesda didn't tell you at all, but it is there. It's about the survival tent and you can use it as a tactical point about anywhere in the world. You cannot place it directly on locations, but you can place it around it. Now, for random encounters, for example, this works wonders. It works against all melee creatures like animals and these legendary sheep squash. Let's say I don't want to take damage from it, I just place my tent, jump on it, and, and as you can see, the sheep squash can't do anything to me. All it can do is release the spikes, which will slow you down, but that's about it. You can freely kill it as you please. Also, the tent can serve you as a higher point, which helps with the scorch beasts, for example, and you can simply avoid all sorts of melee damage by going on top of your tent. I think the best example to show off the survival tent as a tactical point is during Scorch Earth, where you can basically avoid all damage from the minions, Scorch creatures, and yeah, it's, it's a chaotic hell in there. And if you have fireproof to dodge 
the sonic wave damage, then you can just stay there on top of the tent and enjoy. This point and the last makes me realize how unbalanced the survival tent is. So let's say you are over encumbered and you don't want to drop anything or you're not sure what to drop and you are quite far from any train station to sell, to scrap and so on. No problem, just spawn your survival tent and go to your scrap box because you can instantly scrap all your scrap tab and instantly store it as well. This should be enough to clear some space and allow you to fast travel again. Wow, yeah, I know what you guys are thinking and you are probably right. This tent should have never been added to the game. Ah, damn it, I said I wouldn't go into opinion. I apologize, but I really had to say that. I must confess you guys that this benefit is probably my favorite one because I got so fed up in public events where people just one hit legendaries and sometimes they don't just grief everyone doing the event, they also grief themselves. And the most iconic example is during free range when people one hit the ship squatch with melee weapons when it's spawning from the ground, you know, when it's not even a legendary or has any stars and they one hit it and they're like griefing everyone including themselves. Just why? Why do people do that? I've never understood it. Maybe they just don't know that they're griefing themselves. I don't know, but doing this in a private server, it just feels right. I know what I'm getting. If I come to Uranian Fever, I know I'm getting three legendary items from the three bosses that spawn here because there's nobody to contest or grief me. It's such a relief and it makes me feel like I'm not wasting my time because before I used to do events where I didn't get a single boss and now it's different. So for me, this is a benefit with a lot of true value attached to it. I bet you didn't know about this one, but it is true, you can get one more try per hour in seasonal events, at least with events like Midweek, Fashna, and now Mischief Night. You can do one in public events, sometimes even two if you are fast enough, then jump onto your private server and there you go, we have one more free try per hour. Sometimes things can get even worse or better in this case. And you can find it randomly at a known fixed hour. I think it's a bug, I'm not sure how it works, but yesterday I managed to find a mischief event at 5.30 in the morning. I just came to my private server to test something and there it was, the event was up and yeah, I did it. Therefore, it is a huge advantage when you are doing seasonal events because you can do way more than people who don't have access to this type of server. Hmm. No, 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 this time I'm not letting my judgment self pop up and give up my opinion. I will leave that for you guys to decide. Let's say you want to find a specific event like Project Paradise or any other public event really. All you have to do is reset your private server and look for the events that you want. Heck, you can even just switch to public server, wait a little bit and then return to your private server to look for new events. This way it's much easier to find the event you want because every 5 minutes or so your private server will reset and you will find brand new public events to do. I think this is a huge advantage if you are trying to farm a specific event, this is the way to go, especially now with this personal experience where you can do the event by yourself, unless you want to do Scorch Earth or Encrypted. For that you will need a team of course, but everything else you can solo and you get way more value if you do it alone because, as I mentioned before, you have no one griefing you, therefore you should look for the events yourself, do them by your own and claim all the rewards by yourself. I know it's unselfish, but it's the way you get more value out of events with private worlds. 
All right, in my opinion, the top first benefit of the Fallout first, at least from the ones that Bethesda didn't tell us, is the fact that you can reset private servers. Let's say I want to farm a specific location like the Charleston Capitol building. All I have to do is come here, clean the place, farm any legendaries I farm, and then log out. Go to the main menu, join a public server, it doesn't matter, do nuclear winter even. Wait about five minutes and then return to private worlds. And what will happen is that the server will reset and you will be able to farm the same location over and over and over as much as you want, as many times, there's no limit. and. This is very difficult to do in public servers, at least for popular areas like West Tech and White Spring, of course. Even this very location, it's one of the top 10 right now because you can usually find at least one legendary inside and it's a lot of nice caps and experience here. So if you want to farm legendaries through locations, this trick will be your best friend from now on, if it isn't already. So, were you surprised with any of these hidden benefits of the Fallout First membership that Bethesda didn't tell us at all? Which one is your favorite and which one you already knew? Do let me know everything in the comment section below. That's going to be everything for now. I couldn't find anything relevant other than what I presented you here. But overall, the Fallout First membership has a lot of hidden benefits and passive ones that depend on the main features that Bethesda presented us. So I believe that there might be more. I just didn't find them yet anyway that's going to be everything for this video don't forget that my halloween event is still going on until november the third last chance to participate and earn some great prizes join my discord find all the details and of course feel free to participate as well it's for pc and you need to submit your best halloween screenshots if you are new around and you enjoyed the content you have just watched then click in the subscribe button below to support this content and help me grow i also have a patron page for anyone who would like to support me even further the link is always in the description below so go and check it out if you want to of course i will see you guys very soon in the next video until then take care as always and adios bye bye